Hey guys, Brain Hair Bureau and Tools, aka BYOT. Thank you for joining me, and today I picked up a 1930s Remington typewriter for 10 bucks, yes, and I want to restore it going from this to this. If you want to learn how to do it, keep on watching. Let's start it. And there you have it, a 1930s Remington 16 typewriter, yes. It has not been touched, as you can see, for many years, and it's still uh, very uniquely rustic, but inevitably, I think we can definitely clean up a number of items on this unit, especially these keys, yeah. And I don't think anyone wants to touch it like this, which is why I have so many cleaning products. I'll be using all of them, and step number one, making sure you have proper glove wear, because who who knows where this thing has come from and what has actually touched it so definitely get a pair of gloves and definitely get a can of air spray because this really did help me remove some of the miscellaneous particles that I couldn't really get to very easily especially when I opened it up so keep that in mind but also remember to wear some type of protective face mask because you don't want to be breathing in this stuff either because again who knows where it's been after I dust off all the miscellaneous loose particles, I then proceed to actually dismantling it. Now, there are a lot of screws, and when I say a lot, I mean holy Toledo, what is going on here? But I've just spent two hours removing 37 different screws in 15 different panels. What is going on? They really don't make them like they used to because this thing is built like a brick shithouse because this thing is a tank and I can see why it's lasted so long. Even in the dilapidated version of it, it is still very well built and could possibly stand the test of time, yes. As you can see from this timeless video, there are a plethora of screws and it's not that the screws were rusted or stripped, it was just that there were so many screws to remove, that's what actually took the time. After I disassembled all the side panels as well as all the fasteners I wanted to remove, I then proceeded to give it a full scrub down. Now the spray bottle itself only has some water and a bit of Dawn dish soap. I don't want anything super corrosive on this unit. And inevitably all I took was a toothbrush to get the small nitty gritty areas as well as a general scrub brush. And that just took off the first few layers of disgustingness on the top. It did take me a bit of time, but not much as far as this stage. It's more at this stage, I'm just asking myself, where have you been hiding? What have you been doing? What is on your face? It's, uh, it's more like talking to my dog. It's, uh, yeah, they get into a lot, right? Yeah. At this stage, I'd like to introduce you to one of the best inventions of all time, at least for this type of project, and it is the Dremel. Yes, the Dremel, with more of the brushing and polishing brushes, worked amazing for this type of project. It was able to get into the small nitty gritty areas that I couldn't get to, or it would take me a much longer time to do so if I didn't have this tool. Trust me when I say this, this is a very valuable tool to have when doing this type of restoration project. I'm actually just removing the loose paint with this as well as any of the rusted areas because I still wanted to have that beautiful old rustic look without the horrible rusted feel as well as the fact that I want it to actually perfectly clean and nice. Now the tool I'm using with this Dremel is a buffing tool, and it's specifically a buffing tool for metal, but it works perfectly in this type of application. It does sand it down, but not wear down the actual paint over it, because it only is taking up the paint that is loose versus the paint that's actually adhered that I want to keep will stay in place. Now after we're done using the buffing tool, I then take my super fine steel wool and go over the entire surface of the typewriter itself. Now this will completely remove some of the imperfections as well as get up a little bit of the extra paint that is chipping off and just clean it up very nicely and smoothly. Just make sure you're using the extremely fine version, not the coarse version. This is the 0000 version, yes. And then of course, once that's done, go ahead and proceed in giving a nice quick rinse with the spray, scrub it down, and wipe it off. Now because there's a lot of bare metal in this product and we want to protect it over time, I would highly suggest applying some linseed oil. Yes, linseed oil. Now this is actually a paint additive. You can find it in the paint department, but 
For other uses, you can actually use it and apply it to metal and it will protect it from rust. Yes, it's actually on the back of the container as other uses. So please utilize this type of product when applying to bare metal and try and protect it over time from rust. I bet you didn't know that, did you? Well, in all honesty, I didn't know it until like 24, 38 hours ago because I looked it up. And guess what? We learn something new every day, or at least I try to. Now into the next panels, we're actually just duplicating the same process and steps that we just did, which isn't difficult or time consuming, but it is a bit of a dirty job. So just make sure you have a number of extra gloves because I definitely went through a couple of pairs. Yeah. Now another nice tool to have is a stiff metal bristle brush. That was quite at the mouthful, I tell you. Well, in any case, this product was actually quite valuable, worth its weight in gold for this type of project because of these tight knit areas where I'm not able to get my hand into very easily. I was able to use this brush to get into those nooks and crannies that tend to be difficult to get into, but with this, it makes it much easier and it was only a couple bucks. So like always, I will be leaving a link in the description box below on where to purchase one of these items. And just know the fact that this won't loosen up all the keys. It will loosen up maybe a few of them, but it won't make all the keys perfectly fluid. Now, as more of a personal experiment, I wanted to try out a couple rust removal products. Now, one specifically, distilled white vinegar. The other is CLR. Now, the R obviously stands for rust and removing rust, yes. So I wanted to actually test both out just to see how each one worked. I've looked up a bit of information on both sides. CLR is well known for removing rust and vinegar does remove rust. It's more of the naturopathic rust remover and it might not work as well as the specific rust removers that have a hardcore solution to it, but inevitably it does supposedly do the trick. So I tested it out, left them in here for about four to five hours and came back and removed them. Now, in all honesty, these products aren't really destroying the rust and completely dissolving it, but they are breaking it down and making it easier to remove the rust itself. I put them in a quick water bath just to rinse them off a bit and then just start scrubbing. Now, in all honesty, both of these products really did the trick because both of these cleaned off very nice and easily. I did put the larger piece in the CLR solution because it had heavy corrosion and I wanted to break it down as much as possible. And guess what? It turned out amazing. Look at that difference. Oh my goodness. Now there are a few chrome pieces on this typewriter and if I learned anything on this project, I learned, wow, steel wool really shines up chrome. Yeah, I'm quite amazed because all I needed is some fine steel wool rub it on there for a couple minutes and boom it is shining like the north star yes well you know it's pretty shiny as for the plethora of bolts and screws that are associated with this typewriter i actually just took high grit sandpaper this is 500 grit sandpaper and just sanded off the rusted layer on top and you can use a buffing tool with your dremel to shine it up perfectly and make it look brand new Pretty incredible, however, there are a lot of screws, just noting that ahead of time. After they're fully buffed out and looking fabulous, go ahead and proceed to installing it and moving on to the next one. Now as for the keys that were looking so horribly disgusting when I first started this project, after washing them, in all honesty, all I did was buff them out with the buffing tool on the Dremel. This worked out perfectly and took them from dull to perfectly shiny and brand new. Well, as brand new as you can possibly imagine for this stage. Now this is a nice and easy process, just obviously note there's a few keys to count for, yes. After that, I proceed to buff out as many areas as possible with the Dremel. Now, the Dremel is very nice because you can get in all those tight corners, but you can't get everywhere, especially with this type of unit, unless you take the entire thing apart. But all the areas in which you can really see and tell, I buffed out considerably. After I finished buffing, I actually came back and used some Mother's Carnuba Car Wax and waxed over the painted exterior areas. Now this will add a layer of protection as well as the fact that it will leave the area perfectly beautiful and shiny, hopefully for years to come. 
Now this is not something that I've seen on YouTube being done before, but in a way I thought it potentially could be a good idea for the fact that this is a metal painted surface and I want to make it look as beautiful as possible. I let the Cunuba wax sit for approximately 5-10 minutes and then just took a clean cotton cloth and cleaned up the excess. Now this looks like butter afterwards, just saying. Now for this whole project I've really been working from top to bottom because of how dirty this thing is and inevitably we've now come to the point where we're going to be cleaning the feet inserts. Now these things have gone through the ringer apparently because they do look pretty disgusting through all the years of dirt and grime. But as you can see with just the simple sanding buffing tool on the Dremel, it turns these things from horribly disgusting to extremely beautiful and brand new. Pretty incredible. Now comes the really fun, enjoyable part, putting it all back together. Hopefully you remembered where everything goes. Yes, that's key number one, two, and three. As you're cleaning all these products, just make sure you have a well-organized and stable staging area because if you don't, things might get lost and confused with other items. This is key, even I, who did quite a good job of making sure that everything was in the proper order and staged properly, there's a few areas in which I was a bit confused on where things were to go, but inevitably they were staged properly and I was able to figure everything out. The true complexity of this machine is quite the marvel in all honesty. This might be an obsolete tool at this point, but it changed the history of communication for eternity, and you have to appreciate that. So I'm sure most of you appreciate some good comparison shots, which is why I put a couple of these together. Yeah, quite the difference, yes. And look at that, the keys actually do work, or at least some of them. Uh, some of them are quite janky, but this piece is not meant for typing. It's meant for barring, yes. Call me old-fashioned, I think in Oasi this is a quite perfect piece for my bar cart. That is one beautiful, sexy piece of a typewriter. And there you have it, episode number 44 of BoyIT. Done. This is a pretty unique little project, especially with the fact that I learned a lot about history with this product. It's incredible to see a product that had such an, a massive impact onto the world itself and the people that spent their life, yes, their life, dedicated to this product. It's an incredible piece of machinery and I'm so glad that I restored it. Don't want to ever restore it again, but it was pretty awesome to see the before and after. In any case, thanks for watching. Please like the video. Please subscribe to this channel. And please check out my Instagram feed. I post there weekly. In any case, thank you for your time and catch you next time. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Uh, they really don't make them like they used to. Great gym workout though. Yeah. Twenty-one. Twenty-two.